dollars in surplus monies in the players' pension fund was finally forwarded to the players themselves, and Carl Brewer forever will be a hero to them. The first in this series of programs is dedicated to Carl Brewer. Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. 1963 and tonight from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, it's the Leafs and the Blackhawks. Chicago's superb forwards include Stan Makita, Bobby Holland, Kenny Warham, while the Leafs are getting good production from Dave Keon, Frank Mahovlich, and George Armstrong, all headed for 20 goal seasons. The Leafs are the two-time defending cup champs. They finished first last year, but they're not quite as good this season. But who knows what will happen against Chicago tonight as these two teams battle for home ice position in the playoffs. We look for a physical game tonight. These teams don't like each other very much. And for the first time in a couple of seasons, the Leafs may lack a little confidence. They may be thinking we're not quite as good as we used to be. And they're up against a great offense. So it's one of those classic battles, a good defense of the Toronto Maple Leafs against a great offense of the Chicago Blackhawks. Tonight's starting netminders for Chicago, veteran Glenn Hall will be in goal. And for the Leafs, with Johnny Bauer injured, it'll be his backup, Don Simmons. It's December 7, 1963, the Leafs and the Blackhawks. It's Molson, Canadian Maple Leaf Gardens, December 7th, 1963. The Leafs and the Blackhawks, and there's always a war when these clubs get together. Look at the lineups. Future All-Stars, future Hall of Famers. Glenn Hall in goal for Chicago. He ended a consecutive game streak of 502 games last season. Then there's the Golden Jet, Bobby Hull, and that slick centerman, Stan Makita. For the Leafs, talking about slick centerman, Dave Keon will be starring tonight, along with Red Kelly and the Big M, Frank Mahovlich. Our guest in the studio is Carl Brewer. And uh, Carl, I wanted to ask you about your attitude coming into this game against Chicago. Well, Chicago always was a tough customer. They had a great hockey team, as you've pointed out, with all their all-stars. They had the greatest players in the game then with uh, Stan Makita and Bobby Hull and, and a continuing lineup. But we as a Maple Leaf team had, uh, were in the process of establishing ourselves as a dynasty, so the games were really tough. What about Glenn Hall in goal? He was certainly in that era one of the greatest goalies ever. Yes, he certainly was. He was a great, great goaltender. He's called Mr. Goalie in Chicago, but I always have a, a difficult time saying anybody was close to John Bauer. Ah, yes. Uh, the Leafs were two-time defending cup champions. When you started out that season, did you feel that there was another one just ahead in the future? With the work that had been done by Stafford Smythe and Harold Ballard, we were all prepared to be champions. They had started grooming us when we were 12 years of age, so we really did expect to win, and that was part of our makeup. Now, wait a minute. You're crediting Stafford and Harold with this. What about where does Imlac fit into the picture? Well, he doesn't fit into this picture, actually. Uh, I'm going back to when we were 12 years of age, 14 years of age. We won championships all the way up as designed by Staff Smythe and Harold Ballard, okay. who were champions. And those were the integral parts of all the, the glory years of the Leafs when they did win because that championship attitude was brought to us when we were 12, 14 years of age, and it continued through junior hockey and on through the Maple Leafs. Yes, at a point in time, Punch him like did it come, come, come around. He taught the same kind of hockey as Stafford Smythe promoted, and it was championship-style hockey, and as I say, we were accustomed to winning. Did you get along well with Punch? I don't think you would say I got along well with Punch. I lasted seven years in the NHL, and I retired when I was 26. And it was because of Punch Imlac that I retired, so uh, you wouldn't say that I got along with him. But I didn't know anybody who did, actually. How about your uh, personal game that year, 1963? 
I don't remember that much about it. Uh, through the, the 60s, I had been lucky. I'd been performing well, and I'd been an all-star. And it was a, a fantastic experience to know the championships that we won and also to be selected to an all-star team. Uh, I understood that I could play the game. I understood that I had some abilities and that I was probably of all-star caliber. So I was grateful that I was able to attain that. Everybody else was thinking, if I could play 20 years in the league, that would be great. Were you then beginning to think, maybe I've had enough of this in a little while? No, I, I think as we look back at that period of time, Brian, in, uh, in those days, if you lasted 10 years, then they shot you. <laughs> You remember that movie, They Shoot Horses, don't yeah, they? Yeah, did. Well, they used to shoot hockey players, too. I didn't know that. And that's quite a transition when you go to today when they're building franchises around 40-year-olds. So it's quite a dramatic change. <laughs> at that period of time, yeah, we hope to get 10 years in the league. Okay, well, let's look at this game tonight, and it's a wild one. The Chicago Blackhawks at the Leafs. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. All set for the face-off at center ice. The Leafs in their dark blue uniforms. Chicago Blackhawks in white, and Stan Makita, number 21 at center, is checked by Duff, who lost his stick. Fade back at center, Carl Brewer. A pass to Armstrong, over the line. There's the shot, and it's wide. Here, Pallant, watched by Keon. Now, Kenny Warham. A pass to Stan Makita. Back to Warham. He was checked. Duff. A pass for Keon, hopped over on the wing. Vaughn ran into Stan Makita and went down. And Vaughn ran into Ab McDonald. Ab McDonald in possession. Hit Duff with it. Here, Pilat. Pass out at center. Gets it himself. Knocked it along the board. Keon back for Brewer. Brewer. Turns back at his own blue line. Over to Bob Bond on the right wing. Ahead to Armstrong. Back to Keon. Got it in a bouncer. And it bounces wide of the Chicago goal. Here, Pilat. Hit by Duff. Comes out over the blue line. Knocked back into the corner in Chicago territory. Elmer the Moose Vasco. Starting out. Flips it on the board. Stopped by Armstrong. He hit Keon in the back, and Vasco takes the safety. He wants by Armstrong and goes behind the net. Over on the left wing to Ab McDonald. Back to Vasco. Cleared it along the board for McDonald. McDonald and Makita go to center, and Makita shoots it into the leaf zone. Tom Simmons leaves it for Carl Brewer, and puts it over for Duff. Duff gets it to center. Al McNeil is now on the ice. Shot it back into the leaf zone, but it was outside. Warham, slow coming out. Faceoff is now at center ice, coming up to the two-minute mark of the first period. No score between the Leafs and the Chicago Blackhawks, with Kelly on the forward line now with Stewart and Shaq, and it's Hay with Hull and Murray Balfour for Chicago. Al McNeil flips it to the Leafs' blue line, and Tim Horton shoots it off the boards at center. Al McNeil hit by Kelly, and it goes into the Leafs' zone where Tim Horton gets it. Pass ahead for Kelly. He was stopped by Wayne Hillman, number 20. Art Stanley tries to kick it along the boards, ran into Murray Belfer. Hillman hits Stanley with it. Deflects over to Ron Stewart. Ron Stewart hit a skate. Here's Billy Hay. A pass right in front of the net. And it's good wide. It's back for Al McNeil. A shot right across in front of the net. And Shaq gets it up to Kelly. Kelly with Stewart. Pass over to Stewart. There's the shot. Caught by Glenn Hall. Left it for Wayne Hillman. He was ran into Stanley. Bobby Hull goes behind the net. I'll try to bring it out. Shaq ran into Hellman, knocked him flat. Pushes him to Al McNeil. And it's Hellman getting it up to Balfour, stopped by Kelly. Hellman gets it back to McNeil. Bringing it up to center. Shoots it into the lead zone, and Simmons stops it there. 
leaves it. Horton comes up with it. A pass for Stewart. Stewart took it away from McNeil, goes down the ice, and Billy Hay gets back to cover up and shoot it out. Tommy Hull turns with a pass to Hay. Hay, having difficulty, gains his footing. Pass to Hull right through the defense, but he couldn't control it. Stewart ran into him, and the puck comes to the blue line. Salat got it in outside. Faceoff is outside the Maple Leaf blue line. Pulford, Mahavlic, and Nevin facing Chico Mackey, Ron Murphy, and Ernest Renko. Bond. Bringing the puck out on the left wing. He's knocked down. And Renko shot it in. Brewer. Pass to Frank Mahavlic. Over here for Pulford on the left wing. Here, Pilat knocked it off the board. Carl Brewer. Carries into Chicago territory, took his shot. Glenn Hall stopping it. Pierre Pilat into the corner. Passed it behind him. And Vasco digs it out. Watched by Pulford. Pulford back to Brewer. There's his shot, and it was high. Comes back to Carl Brewer, number two, over to Bob Bond, 21, and he passed it for Nevin. Vasco was knocked down. Here, Pilat touches it. Icing is called against the Leafs. Faceoff is in the leaf zone to the right. Chicago play every man up. Vaughn runs into Chico Mackey and Pulford shoots it off the boards down the ice. Evan goes after it. Here Pilat gets back first. Stops behind the net. Here to rink wide pass for Ron Murphy. Murphy is bumped by Nevin and Bob Bond gets it. There's Bond's shot. That was just off the corner. Here's Pulford getting it in front. And Glenn Hall had to stop it. Back to Bond again, a shot. Glenn Hall stopped that. of players all around as Ab McDonald, Sam Makita, Kenny Warham, Wayne Hillman, and Al McNeil face Keon Duffin Armstrong, Horton, and Stanley. Al McNeil, number 19, a pass for Makita. He's hit. A shot by Keon was stopped by Wayne Hillman. He couldn't get out over the blue line. Ab McDonald is stopped by Keon, who shot it over to the left wing. Shot by Stanley to Duff. Duff shoots it over the line. It's knocked out again and in again off Duff. Face off outside the Chicago blue line. Sam McKee gets the draw back to Wayne Hillman. Over to Al McNeil. Al McNeil passes out in front. It's deflected through. Kenny Warren after it. He shoots it. And Simmons made the save on that. And Warren went flying into the board. He's hit again and knocked down. As the Blackhawks came within an eighth of making it one nothing. Duff shoots it out off the board to center. Shot back in again, and Alan Stanley gets it. Stanley over to Horton. Up for Armstrong too far. Al McNeil will pass over here to Fleming. He's checked. Hillman in the corner. Pass to Makita. 
Stanley gets in ahead of Fleming. Puck goes high, knocked down by Stan Makita. Makita trying to get around Horton. A pass for Fleming, and Stanley broke it up. Clears it ahead for Duff too far. Hillman lets it slide. Hillman didn't bother to go after it, so it's waved down by the linesman. And play will continue. Hillman, a long pass to Ab McDonald. Up at center. Tried to go through, and he was checked. Duff. Pass for Ron Stewart. Failed to click. Makita shot it over the line. Stanley. Off the boards for Kelly. Kelly up to center. Over the line. Still has it. Pass it in front of the net. Here's Shaq Frank. Pass it wide. Shaq gets it again. In the corner. Behind the net. Pass it right in front of the net to Stanley. Stanley over to Horton. Horton took his shot, and that was stopped by Vasco. Play is called, and there's going to be a penalty here to Shaq. Leaves penalty, number 23, Shaq. Two minutes for a slashing. Time, 7-10. 7-10, a slashing penalty to Eddie Shack. That means the Leafs will play a man short, and that brings up Billy Hay with Murray Balfour, Bobby Howell, Pierre Pilat, and Stan Makita. Hofford and Nevin trying to kill off this penalty. The first penalty of the game. Hay starts up at his own blue line. Back pass to Stan Makita, goes to center. Gets away from Nevin. Pass it over to Hay. He lost it momentarily. It goes out over the blue line. Here pull out over for Hull. Bobby Hull winds up at center. Trying to go through. Simmons came out of the net. Hopefully it overskated it. And Carl Brewer gets it. And lifts it down the ice. Here pull out back for it. One minute and 15 seconds left in the penalty to Eddie Shack. Hay gets away from Pulford. Hull on his left. Took the pass. Over the line. There's the shot. It hit Bond. And Pulford gets a hold of it. And shoots it down the ice. Armstrong comes over the boards. And so does Keon to replace Pulford and Nevin. Makita. Fanned on his first try. Flips it back to Pierre Pilat over the line with a pass on the left wing. It's outside. Eleven minutes and thirty-one seconds remaining in the first period. No score. Face off outside the Maple Leaf blue line. Makita, Warham, and McDonald. Bobby Howe is back at the blue line. Here, Pilat. Four forwards, one defenseman. 35 seconds remaining in Shaq's penalty. Bobby Howe. Over to Pierre Pilat. Gets away from Armstrong. Up to center. Keon covered him. A shot into the Leafs zone, though. Dan Makita races after it. Stanley bumps into him. Warham shot it behind the net. Ab McDonald tried to clear it back. He did to Pierre Pilat. There's his shot, and that just deflected wide of the corner. Horton takes his time and shoots it down the ice. Pierre Pilat back for it. Three seconds remaining in the penalty. Jack is on the ice. Pass for Stan Makita. Goes over to Ab McDonald. Ab McDonald works his way to center. Pass to Stan Makita. His pass for Warham and Hull goes to the side. Here's right in front of the net. Warham missed it. Horton working his way out. Long pass for Keon. Outside. Way outside. Face off is inside the leaf blue line as Kelly is out there now with Mahovlich on the left wing and Stewart on the right. Nestorenko, Chico Mackey, and Ron Murphy for Chicago. 
On the faceoff, Ron Murphy gets his shot. That's high, and it goes over the glass. Faceoff is in Leaf territory. From the draw, Howie Young took his shot. It went through Stanley's legs. He fell down. There's Murphy's shot wide. Elmer Vasco let one go. It ends up in the corner. Carroll's to the opposite side. And it's Stanley unable to get it out. Kelly tries to get it out. It's along the boards. It's kicked out to center. Stewart ran into Howie Young. Kelly carries on up over the blue line. Back to Horton. Horton took his shot. Kelly went after it, and Vasco intercepted. Elmer Vasco. A pass to Howie Young. Young gets the center, gets his shot, and Simmons caught that, and Frank Mahavlich picks it up. A pass for Kelly, failed to click. Ron Stewart breaks down the right wing. Murphy had him covered, but he cleared the puck into the Chicago zone. Howie Young, checked by Mahavlich. He's grabbed. There's going to be a penalty there to Young. Young of Chicago gets the gate, gives the Leafs the odd man advantage. Chicago penalty, number two, Young. Two minutes for holding. A holding penalty. Time, 10.36. 10.36 is the time of the holding penalty to the Chicago Blackhawks player, Howie Young. Larry Hillman comes out for the first time in the game for the Leafs on the defense, number 22, along with Kelly, Armstrong, Keon, and Duff. On the faceoff, Kelly took his shot wide. Armstrong going to go to Hillman. Hillman over here for, Armstrong, for Kelly. Armstrong standing in front. Duff lets his shot go. That's way wide. Hillman from the other wing. Over to Kelly. Kelly into Duff. Tried to get it back. Nesterenko jammed by the Leafs player and knocked down. And they can't get it loose and hold it for another faceoff in the Chicago zone. And Wayne Hillman playing out there in the defense for Chicago. Larry Hillman for the Maple Leafs. On the faceoff, it's cleared down the ice by number 20, Wayne Hillman. Larry Hillman goes back for it. Kelly. Leading a four-man rush. At center. Shot it over the line. Goes behind the goal. Nesterenko was checked. Keon passes back to Hillman. There's the shot. Right on. Another shot. And George Armstrong whacked in the rebound. George Armstrong gets his ninth goal of the season. And in that case, perseverance paid off. He just kept whacking at the loose puck until it went underneath Glenn Hall, who stopped it at least three times. And now it's one nothing for the Maple Leafs in this first period. Chicago, fun the face off for coming down the ice, led by Murray Bell for number eight. He's stopped by Bond. Leafs go, scored by number 10, Armstrong. Assist, number 14, Keon. Number 22, Hillman. Time, 11.30. Auto goal by George Armstrong. What a great fella he was, Carl Brewer. And I might just point out to the fans that the first period of this game wasn't seen on television at this point in our television career, but the highlights were. We recorded the highlights, and that was one of them with George Armstrong's goal. Great leader, Armstrong. He was around for a long time. He did a lot of things for the Leafs. Everybody on that team was a leader, so it made his job that much easier. What about the defense corps? You had four solid defensemen, two units, 
They played well together, but the other fellows had a, a lot of trouble cracking the lineup, guys like Larry Hillman, for example. Well, we're very fortunate because Stanley and Horton were an inseparable pair, as were Bon and myself, and throughout the seven years of that period of time, uh, we always played together and we got seldom uh, interrupted by other players participating, but there were injuries and guys like uh, Kent Douglas, who in my mind was the best athlete I ever encountered. Really? Yeah, and then uh, Larry Hillman was an outstanding uh, defenseman, in my mind, and perhaps the greatest team player I ever saw because he fought a lot of battles. And then, of course, there was Radar, Al Arbor, who went on to a last year's career as a coach, and he was an effective hockey player, and he filled in as well. So we were very, very fortunate on uh, that Maple Leaf dynasty to have a lot of depth, and that's why we did have a dynasty. I, I remember Arbor as a great shot blocker uh, along the lines of Bob Goldham, and I remember Kent Douglas. He Didn't he have the heaviest, thickest hockey stick you've ever seen? Yes. Kent uh, was a unique hockey player, very smart hockey player, and he did a lot of things well. There was one period of time when he was leading the NHL sc uh, in scoring because... Uh, I guess Bonner or Horton had been injured and he took his place and he was leading the NHL in scoring for a period of two and a half, three weeks and then Horton got healthy, he came back and Douglas went back on the bench and he could never understand that, neither could I, but <laughs> that's the way things worked. One of the Leafs who won the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year, as I recall. That's right. Okay, let's get back to the action. Here, once again, Bill Hewitt. 11.30 was the time of Armstrong's goal from Keon and Hillman. Face off inside the Leafs blue line. Pulford, Mahavlich, and Nevin facing Hay, Holland, Balfour. Pass out to Nevin at center with Carl Brewer. Shot off the board for Pulford. Glenn Hall came out of the net. Cleared along the board. Balfour gets it out for Hay, and Nevin was there to check him. Cleared back into the Chicago zone. Clearing pass for Al McNeil. Al McNeil's pass goes all the way to Carl Brewer. Over to Bob Bond. He handed it right to Al McNeil, who was hit by Nevin. Goes back into the lead zone. Bob Bond back for it. Behind the net. Pass over to Brewer. Up off the boards for Pulford, 2 far. Here, Pilat handed it to Bob Nevin. Over the line. There's his shot, and he shot it high and wide. Al McNeil. A pass for Bobby Hull. Frank Mahavlich. Too well covered. Murray Balfour passed it out. Bob Bond wrapped it back. Balfour gets the loose puck at center, then left it there for Hull. Bobby Hull was checked by Popper. Goes back to Bond. Bond shoots it in. Bounces at the back of the Chicago net. Here, pull out over here to Murray Balfour. Gets it out to Bill Hay. Hay comes to center, shoots it over the leaf line, and Bond goes after it into the corner. Shot around on the board, back to Al McNeil, there's the shot, and Simmons, although he didn't appear to see it, came up with it. Don Simmons caught that puck, even though it appeared as if he'd lost sight of it. We have a face-off in the Maple Leafs zone to the right, one nothing for the Maple Leafs with six minutes. 32 seconds remaining to play in the first period. Chicago have Stan Makita, Kenny Warham, and Ab McDonald, Pierre Pallott, and Elmer Vasco all inside the blue line. Harton got the draw to Stanley. Stanley passes the puck ahead for Duff. Intercepted by Pierre Pallott to Stan Makita. There's a shot, and that Simmons stopped that, knocking it to the corner. Stanley cleared it to the blue line and out. Shot right back in again, offside. Face-off will be at center ice on the Maple Leaf side of the checkered line. Keon tried to clear to an open wing. Pierre Plot moved up, puts it for Warham, stopped by Stanley. Akita then shot it into the leaf zone. Horton, pass over to Armstrong. Armstrong up for Duff. Duff going down the ice with Keon, closing in, and he just couldn't get a shot. Cleared to Stan Makita. Back up to Pierre Plot. Back pass to Stan Makita, the center. Pass for Ab McDonald over the blue line offside. Kenny Warham hopped in ahead of him on the right wing. The 
Out set for the faceoff outside the blue line. Kelly drags it with his skate, but lost possession to Pierre Palat down Ravasco. To San Makita, to Kenny Warham. Jack covered him in the pass. Off his stick went to Ron Stewart of the Maple Leaf. Stewart to Horton. Off the board for Kelly. Tipped over here for Shaq. Into the Chicago zone. Watched by Pierre Pilat. By the center it. Pilat holding on to Shaq will get a penalty. Scored with Young in the penalty box for holding at 10:36. Kyle Allen joining man in penalty. Number three, Pilat. Two minutes for holding. Time 14:43. A holding penalty to Pierre Pilat at 14:43. Brings up Fulford, Mahavlich, Nevin, Hillman, and Kelly. Eric Nestorenko, Sam Makita, Wayne Hillman, Elmer Vasco. Kelly shot the puck for Fulford. Fulford goes behind the net, passes to Nevin, and his shot was off the target. Kelly clears it behind the net again. It ends up at the side of the goal, and Brent Hall covers up with a skate. Face off in the Chicago zone to the right. Five minutes and one second remaining in the first period. Colford is chased out of the circle again for not lining up properly. Hovlitz didn't get the draw. The Blackhawks spear to the blue line. Kelly watched by Makita, and it goes back into the corner. Hillman pass one for Nestorenko. Kelly and Pulford tried to keep it in. Pulford chased back at center over to Hillman. Hillman, number 22. Pass for Frank Mahavlitz. Up over the Chicago line. Back to Nevin. There's the shot. And oh, stop that. Nestorenko is bumped. Frank Mahavlitz gets it over to Nevin, back to Hillman. Larry Hillman on the right side is given a bump, gets it loose. Nevin shoots it back to Hillman. He tried to flip it in front, and Vasco finds an opening and shoots it down the ice. Kelly back there for it. Now he starts up. Four of them up the center. Kelly shot it off the board. The rebound. Glenn Hall knocking it to the side. Here's a chance for Mahavlitz. He took a shot. And that was deflected off Elmer Vasco. Tico Mackey clears it up for Vasco. And he shot it down the ice. About 32 seconds left in the penalty to Pierre Pilat. Larry Hillman. Up to Dave Keon. With Stephen Armstrong. Over the line. Keon back for Kelly. It's right in front of the net. Hillman goes after it. Shot it off the board. Duff covered by Nestorico. Vasco holds it there for a faceoff. And there's 10 seconds left in the penalty to Pierre Pilat. Three minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the first period. On the faceoff, puck was shot down the ice. Simmons out of the net. Horton goes back. Chicago chains on the goal, and Pierre Pilat is out of the penalty box. Horton to Keon. Up to Duff. Duff took his shot. Armstrong gets the rebound and wraps it around off the glass. Stanley moves up. Duff. Tried to center it. Al McNeil shot it around for Bobby Howe. Horton lets his shot go, and Glenn Hall caught that. He flips into the corner, Armstrong. Back to Horton. Here he's coming in from the side. The shot! And that was over top of the net. Duff left it for Armstrong, and Bobby Hull stole it. Ahead to Hayes. Up over the line with Balfour. 
Stanley deflected it to Armstrong. Armstrong was hit. Stanley missed it. And Hull was back for it. Hull at center. Coming to the leap defense. He's turned around by Horton. There could be a penalty here to Horton. Practices. I, some games I was too tired to, I know, to play my best. I just, certain guys he just seemed to keep out. I remember one time for whatever I did, he, uh, he told me that after practice I had to skate around the rink a hundred times. Now that, when you think about it, you say, wow. But when you start doing, you go once, twice. And then uh, I think I had skated maybe 18, 20 times. And then King Clancy came by and he says, go ahead, go on in the dressing room. I said, Phew. But uh, I mean, he was, he was very, he, his knowledge of players was pretty good because he, he plucked guys out of here and out of there that, you know, were definitely helped to win the Stanley Cup. Leafs penalty. Number seven, Horton. Two minutes for hooking. Time, 17.36. Face off is in the lead zone to the right. It comes back to Stan Makita, over to Pierre Pilat. Here's a shot, Bobby held tight to deflect it. Bob Bond shot it off the boards and down the ice. Tim Horton, a hooking penalty at 17.36. Gives Chicago a one-man advantage, playing six men to five. The Leafs lead in the game, one nothing. A pass over to Pierre Pilat. Hay was knocked flat by Bobby Hull. They pilfered. Back up comes Hay with a pass back to Pierre Pilat. With Bobby Hull over the line, it's checked by Brewer. Now for, leaves it for Hull, and Hull comes down the ice. He's checked by Nevin. Hello, Canada and hockey fans. The United States, Bill Hewitt here at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, and the score is 1-0 for the Maple Leafs in this first period with a minute and 12 seconds remaining. And the Blackhawks have the odd man advantage, playing six men to five. Tim Horton is serving a hooking penalty. He received at 17.36. Here's how trying to get away from Nevin. Back to Murray's offer. There's going to be a penalty to Nevin. It stopped at center by Bond. Bobby held back for it. The Chicago player has a goal. There's goalkeeper off the ice. They got six attackers, and it's offside. The blue line. The Leafs will play two men short. A penalty handed out here. Nevin of the Leafs is going to the penalty box. That means they'll play two men short. There's about 24 seconds left in Horton's penalty. Leafs penalty, number 11, Nevin. Two minutes for high sticking. High sticking. Time, 1914. 1914. The Chicago Blackhawks, who used that six man to advantage in most games, had it going for them again. Now they have a two-man advantage. Six men to four. Flailing one nothing. Keon with Brewer and Vaughn. It's Hull with Pierre Pilat, Ab McDonald, Dan McKeita, and Kenny Warren. Back to Pierre Pilat. Pilat going in with his shot. Simmons grabs that. Face off in the lead zone to the right. Chicago play every man up. Martin has about 13 seconds left in his penalty. Nevin, of course, has a minute and 50. 
It's back to Bobby Hull. His shot. Simmons got his toe in the way of that. Here, Palat shot it around behind the net to Ab McDonald. Over here to Bobby Hull. There's his shot. It deflects to the absent wing. Carol Brewer with it. Still in possession. Back to Bond. Bond flips it out to center right. Bobby Hull coming up with a pass. Deflected from Keon to Warham to Palat. His shot goes over top of the net. Stan Makita tried to center it and is grabbed by Don Simmons. We have four seconds remaining in the first period. One nothing for the Maple Leafs. A minute and 17 seconds remaining in the penalty to Bob Nevin. He'll have a minute and 14. to start the second period. Face off in the circle to the left of Don Simmons. Chicago playing every man up. This strategy has paid off for Chicago before. In the last meeting, they scored with a one second remaining in the period. Here's Stanley shooting it, and it comes back to Pierre Pallad as the bell goes to end the first period. One scoring play, that was Armstrong from Keane and Hillman at 11.30. A total of five penalties in the first period. Three of them to the Leafs and two to Chicago. At one time, the Leafs played shorthanded two men. And so far, the Blackhawks have been not able to, unable to break through. The uh, foursome that, uh, that, that worked together and played together as that uh, group of four. And I think when Carl left, it was a big void in my life, of course. And... Uh, we were much like brothers uh, in the way we thought and the way we played. And uh, uh, we really backed one another and we understood our games. And it was a very thinking group. Uh, again, we talked about students earlier. The, uh, the student of the game was Alan Stanley, Timmy, uh, Carl Brewer, and Bob Bond. I, uh, we uh, dissected the games uh, after and we built a game plan before the game. End of the first period here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Leafs leading one to nothing on Captain George Armstrong's goal. Carl Brewer is my guest in the studio. I'm often uh, thinking about how you got along with Bobby Bond, both on and off the ice. Maybe you could expand on that a bit. Well, as, as a, we were fortunate during that whole period of that dynasty because Stanley and Horton were like brothers. They played together and uh, they drank together. And then there was Bond and I, and we... Uh, Roomed together for seven years. Never drank together. Uh, I, I didn't drink in those days. That was a tragedy. I made up for it later, though. Uh, and then uh, Vaughn and I were like like brothers, if you will. We played on the ice. We complemented each other's styles. I, I was uh, perhaps a different type of player than Bob, Bobby, but we were both exceptional skaters, and we both covered up for each other. So our, our relationship carried forward on and off the ice, although I never spent as much money on dinner as he did. Uh, <laughs> Then and Bond, he always then, had a big wad of bills, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he did. Yeah. And then that carried off the ice because he was the uh, best man at my wedding. So our relationship was, at that time, very, very strong. Is it still strong? It's gone through many growth periods, and it's still uh, supportive of each other. Yes, okay. very much so. All right, Carl. It's December 7th, 1963. The Leafs and the Blackhawks at Maple Leaf Gardens. It's Molson, Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. To nothing on Armstrong's goal. Carl Brewer is with us. I wonder, Carl, uh, what you think about yourself, your style, your ability as you watch yourself in some of these playbacks? Well, as we've been working, Brian, on these various playbacks, I've watched the games and they've been very much of interest because, as you know, I didn't watch them at the time. And in watching the games, I, I was wondering why my style and my play was so mediocre and I kept hoping that I would do more. But by the same token, I, I think you see things differently. Again, the, ice, the, the game you're seeing on television different, is a little different than the game that's played on the ice. Uh, as, as you remember, my forte was being able to skate. I skated pretty well. I was wondering why I didn't skate a little bit more than I did in those particular games. But uh, I found it interesting to watch. Well, you're st you were never a mediocre hockey player. You're putting yourself down there. Well, I felt I was mediocre. Maybe that's why I, I became a better hockey player, because I wanted played, to improve on it. Maybe you should have played forward. Oh, we tried that nonsense, and uh, we got out of that. Maybe you should play football. 
<laughs> Maybe you should play baseball. You were uh, you excelled at all sports, right? Well, we all in those days we all played all sports. As you remember, on that team there was uh, Jerry James, who was perhaps uh, the greatest uh, football pl football player of all time, and he played for the Leafs as well. So we were all multi-sport people because we played all the sports and. Uh, there was more money in hockey, if you can believe it, than there was in football. And baseball, there was about the same amount of money, so it didn't matter which of the three you played. Okay. We'll get back to the game in just a moment. It's December 7, 1963. The Leafs and the Hawks from Maple Leaf Gardens. It's Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leaf. At Montreal, it's Montreal 1, and Detroit no score as we start playing the second period. It's cleared back into the Leafs zone. The Leafs are a man short. Nevin has a minute and five seconds now as Balfour gets set. He's in the Leafs zone, watched by Stanley. Stanley kicks it behind the net. Bobby Hull was partially checked. Keon and Horton combined to shoot it down the ice. And I may say the ice is very fast tonight here at the Garden. One nothing for the Leafs is Stan Makita. Number 21. Stands behind the net, gives it to Bobby Hull, number nine. Back to Stan Makita. Over here to Hay, number 11, and he couldn't control it. Horton shoots it down the ice. Stan Makita back to Hay again in the Chicago zone. Nevin has 17 seconds left in his penalty. Stan Makita works his way to center. He shoots it into the leaf zone. Simmons flicks it, and he flicks it into the crowd. Out of town scores. As we have them, first period, Bellow from Gilles Tremblay and Lapierre at 5.23, one nothing Montreal over Detroit. And it's a 3-3 tie, first period, at Boston. Moon, Williams, Bathgate, Fontaine, Curtin back, and Rod Gilbert, the goal scorers in the first period to make it a 3-3 tie. Face off in the leaf zone to the right. Armstrong scoring his ninth of the year from Keon and Hillman at 11.30 of the first period, the only scoring play in the game so far between the Leafs and the Blackhawks. On the face off, Hofford shot it around in the corner to Brewer, too far. Mohamed covered his check. Brewer lost it to Wayne Hillman, who handed it to Bob Nevin. Nevin goes down the ice, over the line, took his shot way wide. Mohamed couldn't control it. Hay flicked it. Pulford got a piece of it. Al McNeil passing it to Pulford, who gets it back to Brewer. Brewer just flicks it along the board. And it's Hillman now down the right side. Wayne Hillman, that is. Larry Hillman playing with the leap. Bob Pulford. A pass for Frank Mahavlitz. Down the left wing, back to Pulford. Pulford over the line with Nevin. Back for Pulford, and Wayne Hillman just passed the last second. Danny Hull races down the left wing. He's hit by Ball. Brewer. Over here to Nevin. Up for Pulford. Checked by Wayne Hillman, a shot it right to Brewer. Brewer, up to Nevin again. Over the line, he's hit by Al McNeil, and Bobby Hell comes down the left side. Not by Bond, number 21. Bond to Frank Mahavlis. Mahavlis pass to an open wing. Nevin roars in, but he's partially covered by Hay. Gets it again, tried to center it. It goes to the corner and howls after it. Gets away from Mahavlis. Coming up to center, he's checked by Mahavlis. Look back to Wayne Hillman. Wayne Hillman, number 20, goes to the side of the Chicago goal. Long pass goes down at center. Carl Brewer with it. He flips it back in again. Glenn Hall caught it. Gives it to Al McNeil. Back to Bobby Hull, number nine. And Hull comes down the ice to center. Here comes the slap shot. And it was caught by Don Simmons. And there he goes again, tuning it into the crowd. I'd just like to remind the people in Sudbury and the Blind River area that immediately following our telecast tonight, they're having a special telethon to help needy children. 
Hey, Blackhawk are claiming that the Liberty is delaying the game, and of course that would mean a penalty. Jim, you don't see that very often, uh, goalkeeper shooting that puck over the glass. No, you don't, and that seemed to be a very deliberate attempt to get the puck, uh, perhaps not over the glass, but to the side of the uh, of the arena, Bill. All set. From the faceoff, Kelly goes behind the net. He's stopped by Nestorenko. Nestorenko of Chicago set it right in front of it. Hit Kelly's skate and goes to the corner. Ron Stewart couldn't get it out. Vasco shot, and that was just off the target. Eddie Shack cleared it out to center. Vasco lost it. Kelly took a whack at it. Vasco gets it again. Stewart had him covered. Murphy tried to get out and couldn't. Vasco. Pass over here to Ron Murphy. Shaq covered him. Stewart nearly got in front. Here Pallad bumped into him. And Murphy was hit. Nestorenko gets to the Chico Mackey. He's trying to move in. He does the Murphy a shot. Someone stops that. And Stanley gets the rebound. Stanley sights out for the leap. A long pass to center right. Shaq trying to get it loose. And Nestorenko has it. Nestorenko with Chico Mackey over the line outside. And the faceoff will be outside the blue line. Played four minutes and 13 seconds of the second period. One nothing for the Leafs. Detroit has tied it up 1-1 on Alex Del Vecchio's goal. The Leafs lose possession to Stan Makita. Now then, there's yelling at the bench, and there's going to be a penalty here to Chicago. Uh, God gave him the best pair of legs I've ever seen on a player. And I say this because. When we first met, we were playing football at St. Michael's out in the field. And I threw a ball that I didn't think anyone would catch. And there was Keon going down the sidelines. And he caught that ball. And I, I couldn't believe the speed, the way he could run. And then, of course, hockey season started, and he got on the ice. And um, it was, he was a natural. Davey, Davey was a natural. Now, Davey also worked very hard, but... Uh, he had a lot of natural ability and one of the great skaters of our time. Jimmy? Bill, in the first period, I thought that Toronto was going to get a bench penalty. Uh, they were yelling at uh, Frank at Berry, and he warned them. But I see now he's uh, taking action against the Chicago penalty, the Chicago uh, bench. We have to wait and see, of course, who's going to come over and serve the penalty. Coach Billy Ray... Frank got very. And it's going to be Murray Hall, number seven. He goes to the penalty box. Chicago penalty. A bench minor, two minutes, time 421, penalty served by Murray Hall. Murray Hall serves the bench penalty at 421 of this second period. Leafs leading 1 0. Duff shot it over the line. Al McNeil clears it back out again. Leafs have the odd man and goes to Kelly. Kelly moves up, takes his shot. That's why. Al McNeil again clears it out. Duff goes back, all the way back. In behind the leaf goal. Passed it, and it was nowhere near Keon, and Al McNeil rags it, goes back into his own zone, shoots it. Armstrong, back to Hillman. Hillman to Keon. 
Keon. Over the line to Duff. Duff shot it around behind the goal under the swing. Hellman back to Kelly. Kelly's shot knocked down by Chico Mackey. Down the ice for Nestorenko. He still got it over the line. There's the shot, and Simmons caught that and gives it to Duff. Duff spun around. There's going to be a penalty here to Nestorenko. It's a two-man break for the Leafs. Kelly over the line. Back to Duff. Duff closes into the corner. It's just out of right in front. And Keon wrapped it right in the open corner. It's still in the Chicago zone. Hofford goes to the boards and holds it there. And now we have another penalty to Chicago. This time to Nestorenko. Well, Jimmy, lots of excitement. Well, Bill, it's very interesting and rather strange that each time each team has made good use of the play whereby the, the goalie goes to the bench when the other team is about to be penalized and the uh, the goalie's team has the puck. I don't think I've seen this, this play work this year in any other game. It's worked twice tonight. Chicago Pally, Hi, number 15, Nastarenko. Two minutes for hooking. A hooking penalty. Time, 540. 540 is the time of the hooking penalty. Now then, Chicago will play two men short. The Leafs did that in the first period. On the faceoff. Mahavlid shot it behind the net. Pierre Palat knocked it to the corner. Stan Makita goes after it and cleared it past Horton down the ice. Kelly goes back for it, number four. Kelly leading a four-man rush with Mahavlid, Nevin, and Pulford. They're over the line. Four of them going in. A pass. Kelly tried to get it. Pulford centered it, and it's wrapped down the ice by Pierre Palat. 12 seconds left on the penalty. Murray Hall, Horton, leads the four-man rush. They're all going to center. Horton, a pass for Mahavlic, through to Pulford. Pulford in the position, still has it. Back to Nevin. Nevin for Pulford, it's right in front of the net. Here comes Horton's shot, and he shot it wide. Masco cleared it for Sam Makita, too far down the ice. Horton goes back, and now Chicago are one man short. Nevin, pass for Frank Mahavlic. Over the line. Nevin follows through with him. Tried to pass it out in front. It goes to the corner. Nevin back to Kelly. Kelly took his shot. Hopefully he tried to deflect it, and Bobby Hull gets the rebound. Out to San Makita. Stopped by Mahavlic. Mahavlic over on the left wing. Up over the Chicago line, going right in and goes down! Mike Mahavlin. That goal by Frank must be a particular, uh, uh, must Leaf make Frank Mahavlic feel very, very happy because the people say that he cannot Mahavich. score goals against the top team. He did tonight against Chicago. There's seven other goals have been against Boston and Detroit. 7 8 Mahavlic scoring. High stick on the puck. But it was touched by the Chicago player who knocked it down, so play will continue. Ron Stewart has it now. Watched by Hay, a pass to Harris. Harris has passed for Shaq, nowhere near him. Oh, Hay and Balfour fail to get over the line. Shaq, thick handling. Pass for Harris, back for Stewart. Over the line, back for Shaq. He takes his shot, right on. And it's three bounds to the wing. Played down the ice and Brewer goes after it. Brewer. Hit by Hull. Bobby Hull now trying to get away from Shaq. Makes the eight-minute mark in the second period. Bobby Hull coming up to center. Over the line. Shaq gets a hold of it. And there's going to be a penalty to Shaq.
And he sacked number 23, gets his second penalty of the night. And the lead will be short in. Number 23, Shark. Two minutes for hooking. Time, 8.09. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Here's a chance for Stan McKee to the drive, and Simmons has got it in his right hand. Boston now leads Rangers 4-3. Faceoff is in the... Leaf zone to the left. Hay, Hull, Balfour, Makita, and Al McNeil. Stanley couldn't get it out. Bobby Hull shot it, and Simmons stopped that. Here's a chance for Keon. Takes a shot. Oh, Ben Hull got his glove on that one. Dan Makita passed back to Hull. Hull starting out now to his own blue line. Up the center. Back to Stan Makita. Makita watched by Keon. Rolled it right in front of the net. And Bobby Hull just couldn't control it. Still in the leaf zone. Hull with it. Here it comes over to Billy Hay, number 11. He passed it back. Stanley gets a hold of it and knocks it out over the line. Al McNeil back, number 19. We're past the nine minute mark now in the second period. Stanley runs into Stan Makita. Keon. Flipped it out. It rolls loose, and Armstrong and Keon have got it. One man back. Armstrong shoots it, and Al McNeil fell in front of it. Keon is replaced by Pulford. It's over to Bobby Hull, a shot. The rebound right in front of the net, and Pulford's got it. Pulford races down the ice. Up over the line, closing in, takes his shot. Stanley went after the rebound. And it goes over the glass into the crowd and they're going from end to end. Jack is still in the penalty box. He has 32 seconds. Hulford and Nevin along with Vaughn and Brewer. Tommy Hull stays out there. Reg Fleming is now out. Ab McDonald. Kenny Warham. Pierre Pillai and Elmer Vasco. Now then, Bobby Hull gets a well-deserved rest. He's been out most of this period. There's a shot by Nevin that goes to the opposite wing from the faceoff. Coming up to the 10-minute mark, the halfway mark in the second period in the game. Warham passing it to Fleming. Fleming up the center. Checked by Nevin. Lasco, a pass to Warham. Here's Warham's shot. And Simmons stops that. Nevin, a pass for Pulford. Masco clears it to Ab McDonald, number 14. Back to Pierre Pilat. He's watched by Pulford. And the Moose, and on his way, Pasco over to Warren. Back to Fleming. There's the shot, and Simmons has got that. Simmons is certainly having a great night tonight, Bill. I heard Punch him, and I coach the Leafs refer to him as a mechanical goalie the other night after he had his 3 0 shutout against Canadians. I don't know what a mechanical uh, goal he is unless it's one that's doing the job perfectly, and he is doing just that. Right, Jim, and it's 2-0 the score in favor of the Leafs over the Blackhawks at the 10-15 mark of the second period. Nevin, Pulford, Mahavlich, Bond, and Brewer. Nevin poked it into the corner in his own zone, and Pulford's back for it. Back for Frank Mahavlich. Mahavlich. Checked by Ab McDonald. Then Vaughn ran into Warham. Fleming is hit by Brewer. It at the blue line, a shot deflected to the corner. Vaughn goes after it. Ran into Fleming. Fleming took a whack at it. Simmons gets a hold of that. Here's play called as Fleming went after the loose puck. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Face-off is in the 
Maple Leafs on to the right. From the faceoff, Hewitt, a long pass for Shaq, goes by him and Pierce a lot. He goes after it. A lot jammed by Shaq. Warham gets a hold of the puck. Number 17 bringing it out. Drop pass to Pierre Pilat up the center. He shoots it over the line. Fleming was offside. That means that Ron Murphy is now coming out for Chicago along with Chico Mackey and Nesterenko. Kelly, Stewart, and Shaq, Horton, and Stanley on the defense. Chico Mackey to center ice for Chicago. Wayne Hillman and Al McNeil on the defense. It comes over to Ron Stewart. His pass for Shaq over the line. Covered by Wayne Hillman, jammed in on the board. Nestorenko clears it for Chico Mackey. Back to Nestorenko. A long pass for Ron Murphy. Up over the line. Horton covered him. Right him off to the board. Stewart tried to get it loose. Chico Mackey gets it to Ron Murphy, sent it right in front. Kelly gets a hold of it. Tries to get it out. It rolls over the line. Al McNeil passes to Chico Mackey, number 16. He turns at center. Checking pretty close at the moment. It's cleared back into the lead zone. And it's on a delayed whistle offside. We have eight minutes and five seconds remaining in the second period. 2 nothing for the Leafs. All set to go. Linesman Ron Wicks set to drop the puck. Referee Frank Gunberry, we can hear him up here in the gondola saying, keep those sticks down. Pass for Shaq, hit his skate, goes back into the leaf zone, and Simmons gives it to Horton, number seven. Horton behind the leaf net, coming slowly with a pass to Stanley. Stanley gets away from Ron Murphy, a pass for Kelly to Ron Stewart, but it was offside. Minutes and 45 seconds remaining to play in the second period, 2 nothing for the leaf. They led 1 nothing in the first period, and Armstrong's goal from Keon and Hillman at 11.30. They scored in the second period. Mahavlich unassisted at 7 8 On the faceoff, Wayne Hellman passed it right on the shack stick. He gave it to Ron Stewart. A pass for Kelly. It hit Al McNeil on the back of the skate. And it's cleared out to Eric Nesterenko. To Chico Mackey. He was hit by Stanley, partially. Tim Horton comes down the ice for the lead. Over the line. Tried to go through. Left it there. It's cleared over on this wing for Murphy. Stewart skated him off. He falls. Chico Mackey back to Wayne Hillman and hopped over his stick and goes into the corner. Wayne Hillman. Pass to Al McNeil. Up to Chico Mackey. A long shot. Simmons played it to Shaq. Shaq. Ran into Murphy. Gives it to Stanley. Over here to Horton on the right wing. Long pass to Shaq. Up over the line. Pass it back and Keon didn't see it. Back for Chicago. Over the line for Ron Murphy. Try to cut in. Nesterenko off the side. Horton grabs a Chicago player. Play is called and there's a holding penalty against the lead. Tim Horton. Well, that's the fourth penalty of the second period, and that makes it two apiece. Well, I see Bobby Hall out on the ice again. This week I heard Carl Brewer uh, tell an audience that, uh, that uh, Bobby Hall was the hardest player to stop. Now, that's a very strange thing because uh, Brewer, play, <coughs> Brewer plays left defense and Hall plays left wing. You do watch Hall. He comes up left wing one time, center the other one time, and right wing another time. Right, Jimmy. 13.29 is the time of the holding penalty. And from the faceoff, 
Here's a chance for Bobby Hull. He centered it right on the Keon stick. Keon to Armstrong. Brewer goes racing down the left wing, over the line. Armstrong after it. He takes his shot. And Glenn Hall stopped that. Now up for the first time, Murray Hall for Chicago, number seven. Bobby Hull to Pierre Pallott. Armstrong watching him. Pass to Hay, stopped by Bond and Keon. Back to Bond, number 21. Just shoots it back into the Chicago zone. And then Stan Makita. Here he comes, number 21. Up to center right. He's got Murray Hall on his right. He was checked by Bond. Gets it again, though, over to Murray Hall. Over the line with Pierre Pallott. Pierre Pallott didn't see it to the last second. Here he's getting set. The screen shot is wide. And it rebounded out over the blue line. Stan Makita. A pass to Murray Hall. Back to Hay. They're over the line. Hay goes into the board. Hall tried to center it. Brewer ran into Murray Hall and knocked him down. Keon passes it for Armstrong. Armstrong tried a flip pass intended for Keon, and it goes into the Chicago zone. Pitt Martin has scored for Detroit. They lead Montreal 2-1. Lapped around on the boards. Here, Pilat tried to keep it in. He did to Bobby Howell. There's his shot across in front. It goes back to Stan Makita. The drive hits Stanley Skate. Hofford to Nevin. And Nevin shoots it down the ice. 12 seconds left on the penalty to Hort. Four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the second period. 2 nothing for the lead. There's a shot right across the goal ball screen. Hall wasn't expecting it. Hofford flips it back to Horton as he's on the ice. It went to Bond, though, to Stanley. Stanley over to Bond. Bond to center, up over the Chicago line, closes in with a shot. And again, Al McNeil dropped down to make the save, although that seemed to hurt him. It's over the Leafs line. Stanley knocked it out. Al McNeil covers up. Third it along the boards. Then Kenny Warham, pass for Stan McKee, that's offside. And the face-off will be outside the Leafs blue line. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. It's going to come back, actually, to the checkered line, but on the Maple Leaf side. It's Sam Makita staying right out there. Reg Fleming has moved on to the right wing, and Ab McDonald on the left. Rangers have tied it up at Boston. It's now 4-4. 2-0 here for the Leafs over Chicago as Alan Stanley. Sick handle by two. Long pass for Frank Mahovlich was way too far for him. It's over the red line. Vasco touched it. Icing the call. Nowhere near Frank Mahovlich on the pass. And we have three minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the second period. Fontaine scored the goal for... Rangers, Ingerfield, and Gilbert assisting. So that's Rangers in Boston, 4-4, second trade at Boston. Detroit leads Montreal 2-1, and the Leafs are ahead 2-0 here as Ron Stewart. Still stick handles with the puck. Gets up to Kelly. Kelly. Being watched by Ab McDonald. Still has it over to Stanley. Flips it ahead. Stopped by Stan Makita. He gets it over the line. Trying to center it in front. It's Fred Fleming trying to get it to Ab McDonald. Is uncovered. It comes out in front of the net, and Kelly has it. Kelly down with Stewart and Mahavlich. They're up over the line together. Kelly to Stewart. He shoots it right off. Mahavlich looks like right a was just off the target and they hold it against the boards and there's no further play. At Montreal, second period, Detroit two, Montreal one, Bellavo, Del Vecchio, and Martin, the goal scorers. And at 4-4, second period at Boston. 
six goals scored in the first period in Boston, three apiece, and they both scored once in the second. Armstrong and Mahavlitz, the goal scorers for the Leafs in this game so far, 2 nothing over Chicago. Keon covers Wayne Hillman. Howie Young shot it along the boards for Nesterenko, number 15. Nesterenko comes down. He's knocked flying by Brewer. Then Young ran into Duff. Wayne Hillman, a pass for Tico Mackey to Ron Murphy. He gets over the line, trying to cut in, pass it right in front of the net, and Keon was there. Ahead for Duff. Just gets it out to center right. Howie Young with it, number two. Young ran into Bond, fell. Brewer shoved by Tico Mackey. Lost it. Duff. Check. Tico Mackey trying to get his shot. Nesterenko has it. Here's back to Young. And he fanned on it. Armstrong ahead for Keon and Duff. And they chop it into the Chicago zone. And Wayne Hillman's back. A minute and 50 seconds remaining in the second period. It goes out to center right. Bob Barnes shoots it right back in again. Chicago go back. Wayne Hillman. Number 20. Still with it. Keon covered him. Howie Young. To Nesterenko, stopped by Duff. Still in the Chicago zone. Hillman, a pass over on the left wing to Murphy, ahead to Nesterenko. Nesterenko at center. Gets away from Duff. Gets over the line to Ron Murphy. He's checked by Duff this time. A pass to Hillman. Hillman just shoots it, and it hits the referee. Dave Keon to Duff. To Armstrong. Got it in. It's Dave Last Keon after it. In this period. Less than a minute to go. Centered it right in front. It comes back to Brewer. Over to Bond. Bond let his shot go. It goes right to Glenn Hall, and he holds it. We have 49 seconds remaining in the second period. Chicago now send out Bobby Ho. Murray Hall, Billy Hay, Pierre Pilat, and the Moose, Elmer Vasco. Bob Pulford, Nevin, Frank Mahavlich, Stanley, and Horton. Hay didn't get in the uh, proper position in the circle, and now he's going to be waved out of there. And they're going to wave Pulford out, too. So the referee isn't picking any favorites. Chasing them both out. Mahavlitz took a swipe at the puck from the faceoff. Here he's got it again. Pass it right in front of the net. Here Palat clears it to Murray Hall. Up to Hay. Hay, a long pass for Bobby Hull. Stopped by Nevin. Frank Mahavlitz gets a hold of it. Over to Alan Stanley. Up for Frank Mahavlitz. Mahavlitz, too well covered by Pierre Palat. And Pulford flicks it in with 22 seconds remaining. Elmer Vasco, a pass to Bobby Hull. A clear pass to Billy Hay with Murray Hall who took the pass over the line. There's the shot, hit Stanley. Stanley comes up with it. Flicks it out to Pulford, too far. And Vasco has to go back for it with five seconds. He looks up at the clock, tried to find a man in position, gives it to Bobby Hull. There's the shot, Simmons has got it. The bell goes, and the second period is over. Go Blackhawks from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Two goals in the game. Armstrong for the Leafs and then Mahovlich followed up with a second goal. Let's revisit those goals now with Bill Hewitt. Goes behind the goal. Nesterenko was checked. Keon passes back to Hillman. There's the shot. Right on. Another shot. And goal! George Armstrong whacked in the rebound. Out to Stan Makita, stopped by Mahavlich. Mahavlich over on the left wing. Up over the Chicago line, going right in and goes, go! Mike Mahavlich.
With me is Carl Brewer tonight, and Carl, in the old six-team league, you had some great rivalries, especially with Montreal, and now Chicago, with all those big fellows and the fast fellows and Hull and Vasco and all the rest, seems to me you always have an edge when you meet the, the Blackhawks. Uh, we did well against the Blackhawks. They were a great hockey team at that period of time. But we as a Leaf, we are also a good hockey team, so we did well against them. Uh, the rivalries were intense at every level, Montreal particularly. But I, and when you get played games, usually they were back-to-back -back games. You played Saturday night in Toronto against the Boston Bruins, and you go back in Sunday night and play against the Boston Bruins, and believe me, that was hell. So you had lots of time to work up a little hatred. There was a lot of hatred. There was an intense hatred. In those days, the players on other teams did not talk to each other. We didn't talk to or associate with each other much as they do today. Who were your enemies? Everybody in the NHL. Everybody? Oh, sure. Who stood out, though? In the Gordie NHL? Gordie Howe or... Uh... Uh, Gordie Howe was an interesting phenomenon. Everybody has their own approach and their own opinion on the man. He was a great hockey player. He got a lot of room because he'd just soon cut your eye out as a look at you. So, uh, yeah, he got a lot of room. Was he great? Sure. His great greatness was deserved because he got a lot of space. What about Bobby Hull? Oh, there was no comparison. Bobby Hull wouldn't hurt anybody. He was a clean guy to play against. He was uh, always a gentleman on the ice. He'd hit you, but it was always clean. One of the great rivalries that I saw in the NHL during that period was Bobby Bond and Bobby Hull. And it was amazing because Hull came down the left side and Bond was on the right side. And they'd hammer each other every shift. Bobby Hull didn't try to go around Bond. He just wanted to run into each other. They just had fun. But it was intention. Those were two powerful human beings. In this game tonight, two of the best left wingers, Hull and Mahovlich. Totally different styles, as you know. Yeah. Uh, Hull uh, had a greatness. He had a flair that was magnificent. I think he was the most exciting hockey player that ever played the game. Frank was exciting periodically to uh, to watch. He was uh, glamorous to watch. Uh, they were very, very different. I think that uh, Bobby Hull's style was much more flamboyant, and he, over a period of time, he was just so exciting. We'll see more of them in the rest of this hockey game. It's Chicago at Toronto, December 7, 1963. It's Molson, Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. On the faceoff, the puck is back in the Chicago zone. There at the north end of my left, the Leafs, the south end of the right. We're in the final period. 2-0 is the score. Favor of the Leafs. I'm strong in the first period. Mahavlich in the second. It's Estorenko offside at the blue line at Leafs territory. And that means a faceoff. A sellout crowd. It's, they're jammed into Maple Leaf Gardens tonight for this battle with the front-running Chicago Blackhawks. Right of Maple Leaf. That's Chico Mackey, number 16. Eric Nesarenko, number 15. Ron Murphy, 10. Wayne Hillman, and also number 19 is Al McNeil, former Marlboro Jr. Up the ice now for Carl Brewer. A pass to Mahovlich. One man back. He's closing in with a pass to Nevin. He shot it wide. Brewer from the blue line. Back to Bond. Here comes the drive, and it's wide. Nevin, shooting it right to Wayne Hillman. Mahavlich put Nevin right in the clear, and he shot wide. Al McNeil shoots the puck into the leaf zone, and Bond goes back for it. Bond, failed to get out. Ron Murphy lost it to Mahavlich. Mahavlich, a pass up for Nevin. Back to Colford, Colford closing in, takes his shot, and Glenn Hall covered that, and Nevin was knocked flat. Mahavlich ran into Hillman. Kiko Mackey tries to get it out. It's kept in. Hillman after it, shot it around on the board. Murphy at the blue line is partially blocked. It comes loose. Al McNeil with it. And Nestorenko to Hillman. Here's the shot, way wide. Duff gets the rebound off the board. Dick Duff. Straight up the ice. Pass for Pulford, and he deflects it down the ice, but he had deflected it from his own side of center, and Vasco goes back to touch it for icing. Glenn Hall skated out of the net to 
bat an object with a stick back into the net so nobody would put their skate on it. Faceoff is in the leaf zone to the left. Don Simmons watches as Pierre Pilat lets one go. A weak one. Bobby Hull let it go wide. Murray Hull was knocked down. Ron Stewart, a pass to Eddie Shack. Off the boards for Kelly, and Kelly just failed to pass it to Ron Stewart. Back comes Pierre Pilat up the center. And he passed it to an open wing, and Bobby Hull just couldn't catch up with it. Vasco over here to Murray Hall. He handed it right to Stanley. Shaq. Shaq gets it again. Passes it to Kelly. Kelly backhands it. Vasco fell. Kelly falls with him. Bobby Hull now winds up right in front of his own net. Down the right wing. Kelly trying to catch him. Stanley checked him. Stanley. A long pass to the open wing, and there was nobody there. Pasco goes back. Here comes Bobby Hull again to Murray Hall. Up the center. Hay trailing. There's the flip shot. Simmons grabs it. Goes behind the net with a pass to Ron Stewart. Off the boards for Kelly. Shot right back. Bobby Hull with it. Shot it across in front of the net, and Shaq gets the rebound. Off the boards. A flip pass stopped by Pierre Pilat. Pierre Pilat tries to get around Horton. Horton chases him and then gets the puck himself. Tim Horton then lost it to Hay. Hay was checked by Horton. Horton comes up with it again. And his pass for Kelly was too far. Elmer Vasco to Billy Hay. Hay to Hull. It got away from him. Eddie Shack handed it right to Hay. And his pass went to Kelly and he shot it down the ice. Shack goes after it. Shaq steals the puck, going in the This is good! Goal the puck from Elmer Vasco, and went in alone to score. And that makes it 3 nothing. Well, Jimmy, that's an unusual Late hit. Call. And also, the way that Shaq slowed down, almost with a dead stop in front of Glenn Hall. I think he was astounded to find he had the puck and nobody near him, Bill. Time, 3.35. 3.35, Shaq from Kelly. They gave Kelly an assist on the play. Here's a shot. Simmons stopped that. Armstrong off the boards. Keon gets it. That's Shaq's fifth goal. Here comes Keon. He was given a bump by Al McNeil, goes to the corner, tried to center it out in front. Warham, checked by Duff, he centered it. Wayne Hillman, a pass for Warham, and it goes down the ice. And it's Carl Brewer going back for it. We're at the 4.15 mark of the final period. 3-0 for the lead. Vaughn down the right wing to center. Right up over the Chicago line. Passed it right in front, there was nobody there. It's cleared out for Stan Makita. Makita, a clearing pass to an open wing to Warham. Back to McDonald to Warham. Back to Stan Makita. And he couldn't get his shot. Ticked up. He was partially checked. And it goes back to Wayne Hillman. Hillman watched by Keon. Keon back to Bond. Bob Bond back to Keon. Up over the Chicago line. Trying to go through. And Hillman had him covered. And Warham, first have McDonald. A pass to Stan Makita, number 21. He fell over Duff, passed it out in front. Vaughn covers up. Here it off Duff. The linesman fell. And somebody's been cut. Blood on the ice. One of the players is cut. Trying to find out which one it is. It's Duff. Duff has been cut. There's blood on the ice. He gets off the ice. And Makita passes one over the line, and it's offside. And Dick Duff has gone to the Gardens Hospital for repair. Seemed to be he was nipped in the mouth. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Forward line, it was sort of uh, a new life. Uh, now I'm chasing those forwards into their end, or their defensemen. Whereas in the past, I was always the first one back to get the puck, you know, as a defenseman and being chased from right behind by, you know, 
forwards that were trying to nail you and everything. So uh, it was sort of a, a reprieve, if you like, in a way, and, a, and I kind of enjoyed that. On the face-off, Frank Bahama is number 27. Back to Stanley. Up to center. Takes a long shot. Gwen Hall caught that. Basco. Getting away from Mahavlich. Races down to his own blue line. A pass for Chico Mackey. Hofford was back to Frank Mahavlich. A pass ahead to Nevin. Off the boards for Mahavlich. Failed to get away. Now then, Mac, Chico Mackey, pass one for Nestorenko, and Horton has it. Back to Stanley. Up for Mahamelich. Got it over the line. Glenn Hall stopping it. Tell Mervasco. Vasco and Nestorenko try to combine. We're at the 620 mark. Up comes Howie Young. Takes his shot. Simmons deflected into the corner. Stanley for Mahamelich and Pulford. Pulford breaks away, Nevin on his right. Pulford closes in with a pass for Nevin. And Ron Murphy came back beautifully. Here's Pulford with it. A pass for Mahavlich. He shoots it. Oh, he backs another shot. And that goes into the corner. Pulford with it. Sending it face to Mahavlich. A shot. Oh, Ben Hall got a toe on that one. Here's another shot. And it goes to this way. That's the right goal. Checked by Mahavlich. Gets it again. It hits Nevin. Cleared out to the blue line. Up to center. Mahavlich tried to turn. Eric Nesarenko with it. Passed it right on Stewart's stick to Bob Pulford. One man back. Pulford closes in. He fans on his first shot. Gets it again. Glenn Hall juggles it and holds it out. Well, Jimmy, lots of action there. Yes, Bill, and Coach Punch Emlock said that he thought his team was beginning to skate after the game in Detroit last Sunday. He thought he saw more evidence of it, evidence of it in here Wednesday night, and now again here Saturday night. This is a team effort. All lines are playing very well. Skating fast. Bobby Pulbert's having a great night. All set for the faceoff. Henri Richard has scored, and Montreal now lead Detroit 3-2. Third period at Montreal. Carl Brewer, a pass to Kelly. Over on the right wing for Ron Stewart. Al McNeil checked him. Bob Bond then takes the shot. That goes right to Glenn Hall. Murray Hall now gets it out to Bobby Hull. Here he comes to center. A long shot. Simmons caught that. Behind the net, Brewer kicks it for Ron Stewart. Bobby Hull gets it loose, though, to Billy Hay. Back to Murray Hall, and he passed it over to Wayne Hillman. He kept it in. Hillman, a pass to Hay. Hay bumped in a Brewer, and Brewer knocked Hay down. After Hay had given him one. Don't like to see those sticks get high, and both of those players had the sticks up around each other's necks, Bill, and that's when players get hurt. That's when the referee should really move in and cool them out. And he's and doing just he that. <laughs> I think he got the wrong pair. <laughs> he most certainly did. This must have been a side attraction we weren't watching. Alan Stewart were over on the other side when Brewer and Hay went at it at this side, so you only saw the side show, and they don't, they don't rate, apparently. So we have Bobby Hull, number nine, and Ron Stewart, number 12. Chicago, penalty. Number nine, Hull, two minutes for high sticking. Leafs penalty, 12, Stewart, two minutes for hooking. Time, 8.07. 8.07, high sticking and hooking to Bobby Hull and Ron Stewart. Now we have 11 minutes and 40 seconds remaining as the Blackhawks are called for icing. Face off back in the Chicago zone. On the out-of-town scoreboard, Rangers 5, Boston 4, Montreal 3, Detroit 2. 
They're all in the final period. All set to go. It's cleared over onto this wing. Al McNeil and Shaq along the board. Hold it there for a face off. Now then Fleming comes out. Here we have on the ice now Mr. Shaq, Mr. Fleming, and Mr. Young. <laughs> face off. Fleming number six. Pass to Howie Young, number two. Young watched by Shaq. Passing it back to McNeil over to Fleming. A pass over on this side, Brewer. Over to Bond. Bond to Shaq, offside. Face off will be outside the blue line. A. M. Fleming, Young and McNeil, Kelly, Shaq, Vaughn, and Brewer. Kelly gets the draw back to Carl Brewer. Brewer, back to Vaughn, over to Brewer, up for Shaq, back to Kelly. Kelly closes in with a pass for Vaughn. There's his shot. He ran into Al McNeil. Fleming goes down the ice. Shaq caught him with a high stick. Shaq gets a hold of the puck. And there will be a penalty there. Arms and legs, and he certainly was all arms and legs, and he had them all around Fleming, but he stopped the play there. Shaq gets a penalty. Penalty, number 23, Shaq. Two minutes for high sticking. Time, 9.15. Carl Brewer was saying something to Fleming. It's a high sticking penalty to Shaq. And now the Leafs will play two men short. Chicago won. Three nothing to score in favor of the Leafs. Akita goes down. Horton ran in up here. Palat. Here's Warren trying to center it. Back to San Makita. Took his shot. Simmons stopped that. Warren passed it right on Dave Keon's stick, and he shot it down the ice. San Makita back for it, number 21. Dick Duff is coming back to the Leaf bench. Here comes Palat over the blue line into the corner. Still has it. Tried to center it. Stanley covered him. It comes back to Howie Young. Partially hit Keon. It's cleared over to Makita. Makita passing it back to Howie Young again, and he shot it 10 feet wide. Stan Makita with it. He's getting set. There's his shot. It hits Stanley. Stanley shoots it out and down the ice. Ron Stewart comes on the ice, and so does Bobby Hull. Makita. Back to Pierre Pilat. Chicago, a man advantage. Over the line. Nevin cleared it to an open wing. He's dumped by Makita. John Simmons may have been hurt on the play. He gets up slowly. He didn't see Nevin coming in behind him. Boston have tied the score at New York 5 5. Busick scored. Chicago have every man up now. Makita, Warham, McDonald, Howe, and Palat. All set to go. Horton runs into Makita. Warham gets it back to Howe. Howe passing it into Makita again. A shot across the goal mouth. Here Palat moves up. He's dumped by Pulford. Hopefully it holds it against the boards and there's no further play. And Makita dumped Nevin for no reason and he's going to the penalty box. Well, 
Makita goes to the penalty box. Jim, it Chicago looks like it's not going to take too much before something happens here. No, it's two been minutes. that way all night. They've been playing the game very hard. Every once in a while, the sticks get a little high, and the body checking starts, and we can still see uh, an eruption here yet. We're at the 10.40 mark of this final period. Teams are even now at five aside. Murphy and Nesterenko, Palat and Vasco, the Homelich, Pulford, Stanley, and Horton. Back to Horton. Horton over to Stanley. Stanley goes to center ice for the pass to Pulford up to the Chicago line. Stanley still with it. Rolled it right in front of the net, and Nesterenko had it on his glove, and the faceoff is in the Chicago zone of the left. Nine minutes and five seconds remaining in the game. Three to nothing to score in favor of the Maple Leafs. Montreal over Detroit in the final period, three to two. That game is not over. And Rangers and Boston are tied, 5-5, third period at Boston. Here, Pilat, watched by Pulford. Frank Mahavlis kicks it back to Stanley. Off the boards for Pulford. It hopped over his stick. Eric Nesterenko with it. Mahavlis watches him. Elmer Vasco. Clearing pass to Nesterenko. Up to Pierre Pilat. Now then, Shaq is back on the ice. A shot goes near the leap goal. Orton gets a hold of it. Lost it to Ron Murphy. Jams him against the boards. They hold it there, and there's no further play, and we have eight minutes. And 33 seconds remaining in the game. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Face off in the Leaf zone to the right. Kelly, Duff and Armstrong, Keon and... Larry Hillman. Dave Keon. Fell. Gives it to Kelly. A pass for Duffin. Pierre Pilat broke that up. Goes for Ron Murphy. Stopped by Larry Hillman to George Armstrong. Up over the Chicago line. And he was checked by Elmer Vasco. Shoots it down the ice. 48 seconds left in San Makita's penalty. Kelly back for it. Leading a four-man rush to center. Duff let it go. Keon with it. Took his shot. Another try. Armstrong passing it around onto the boards on this side. Kelly lets his shot go. Armstrong dragged it, but he dragged it too far by the open corner. Goes down the ice. Evans over the board. Boston now leads Rangers 6-5. A pass over here for Duff. Duff trying to slap it to Keon. He did, and he shot it past the short side. Here's Nevin trying to take Duff's pass. It comes back to Larry Hillman, and he wraps it right back into the Chicago zone offside, and the faceoff goes all the way back. Boston now lead Rangers 6-5. to five. Murray Oliver was the goal scorer at 7-21. Murray Oliver was the goal scorer at 7.21. Face off in the leaf zone to the right. Seven minutes and 18 seconds left. Wolfrey, Nevin, Mahavlis, Brewer, and Bond, and Murray, Balfour, and Brewer are fencing a little bit. On the faceoff, Frank Mahavlis races down the left wing. Pulford and Nevin with him. A pass for Pulford was behind him. Murray Balfour comes down the right wing with Red Fleming. Up over the line. Fleming tried to pass it in front. Brewer covers him, and Pulford gets a hold of it. Brewer goes down. Up the ice for Pulford. A pass for Nevin. Nevin fell. Bobby Hell touches it. A penalty is handed out to Fleming.
Fleming gets the gate. Face-off in the Chicago zone on the left of Glenn Hall. Hoford, Mahavlich, Nevin, Horton, and Kelly. On the face-off, it's cleared down the ice by Chicago. Simmons stopping it for Kelly. Kelly, a pass ahead to Pulford. Pulford and Mahavlich and Nevin up over the line together, the three of them. A pass intended for Mahavlich is handed right to Horton. He's closing in. There's a shot and a hit Pulford. Clear to the blue line. Horton digs it to Nevin. Off the board to Pulford. Right in front for Mahavlich. And Murray Balfour hands it to Mahavlich, but he had to go all over the blue line. Passing it to an open wing. Pulford. Pass for Nevin. Goes into the Chicago zone. Al McNeil goes back. Al McNeil lifts the high one down the ice. Five minutes, 50 seconds left in the game. Red Kelly. Up to center. Over the Chicago line. Closing in. Still has it. Tried to center it. Too well covered. Chico Mackey finds an opening. Shoots it down the ice. And there's... 40 seconds left in Red Fleming's penalty. Tim Horton back. Horton, a pass for Duff. Stopped by Pierre Pilat, and he just shoots it back at center. Horton with it. Tim Horton leading a three-man rush. A pass for Keon over the line with Armstrong. Keon took his shot right off. And that was stopped by Glenn Hall. Montreal now lead Detroit 4-2. Kelly leads a four-man rush with Stuff. A pass over the line. Pierre Pilat broke it up. Armstrong goes after it. Rolls to Pierre Pilat. He clears it out to the blue line. Stuff knocked it in. And Armstrong's knocked down by Fleming. And there'll be a face-off outside the blue line. Claude Provo from Talbot and Baxter with 13-16 of the... Final period, and Montreal lead Detroit 4-2. It's 3 nothing here. Well, it's a good job the referee is keeping a tight hold on this game because these players are just asking for trouble. Every time they get near them, near each other, they bump each other, and their sticks are close to each other's mid midship. On the face-off, it's Pierre Pilat, number three, a back pass, Elmer Vasco. Vasco gets it out to Stan Makita, number 21 at center. Gets to the blue line. Check. Pierre Pilat with it. His pass, Ab McDonald, over to San Makita. He handed it right to Ron Stewart. Ron Stewart failed to get it out. Bob Bond goes back into the corner. Got it around on the boards for Eddie Shack. Up to Harris. Harris trying to get away. Passes over here for Shack, and Brewer moves up. Brewer. Ran into San Makita. Makita comes up with the puck. Gets over the line, tried to go through, and Harris passed it out to center. It hops over, Pierre Pilat, and Eddie Shack letting one go. He put it in the net. But it was offside. Offside. Be no goal. He scored after the whistle. On the faceoff, Stewart back to Brewer. Brewer behind the net to Bond. Bond ahead for Harris. Harris brings it out on the right wing. Pass for Shaq, goes to the corner. Shaq races after it. 
Right to center it he did. Right up to center ice and there's Eddie Shack with it again. He goes back into his own zone. Still has it. Pass it out to Harris. Harris back to Shack. In with Ron Stewart. A pass to Stewart and the shot was stopped by Glenn Hall. Back comes San Makita. Up with Red Fleming. Over the line. San Makita gets a shot. Jack was caught with a high six. There's going to be a penalty there. Fleming. Jack down on one knee. Now Bond has gone after Fleming. They're at the penalty box. Here comes Shaq. Here Pilat it there. Now Shaq is looking at Fleming. And Makita's in there with him. Fleming is out of the game. Still arguing there. Now Fleming wants to take on Hillman. Now then Bond gets a hold of Fleming. Gets on top of him. Keeps swinging at him. Still swinging. Now all the players are coming out on the ice. Now then Horton gets a hold of Fleming. And they're all getting into it. Dan Makita. And Keon. Al McNeil on top. Brewer's got a hold of Murray Balford. And Balford pulls his sweater off. Stanley is still trying to pull Hay off. Fleming gets up. Horton has a hold of him. Still has a hold of him. And Hay gets on top of Stanley. Horton has Fleming. Now then Hillman goes at it with McNeil. And they haven't tired yet. Jimmy, this is quite a Donnie Brickley almost saw this coming. Yeah, uh, uh, Al McNeil and Larry and Larry uh, Hillman are going at it. And there's Wayne Hillman standing right by watching his brother fight. One of the very few players that does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different fights. Look at the goalies down here, Bill. <laughs> Murray Balfour chasing Carl Brewer. Murray Balfour wants to get in a few shots. Well, maybe we can get a real full shot of all the gloves and sticks all over the ice. Now then we have Fleming mixing it up again.
And Stanley swings at Fleming, and they're all getting into it. Now then, here's Balfour and Brewer again. And Brewer mixing it up with Balfour. They're still at it. Brewer getting on top of Balfour. Now then, they're back on their feet again. Now he's banging with his head. They're still mixing it up. Now then, Balfour and Brewer, and they all get in on it. They're all fighting over at the leaf bench. And Makita. Ends up, gets a hold of Fleming. Fleming goes down. Stop has a hold of Fleming. And Chico Mackey is grabbed, and this Renko grabs a hold of him. Vaughn and Stan Makita, the goalkeeper, still wants the melee. Okay, Jimmy. Hey, the goalkeepers must have a union. They've been targeting over. They're not interested in getting in any fights. Phil, there'll be at least 10 players. Well, not at least. There will have to be 10 players from each side will probably get fines because uh, everybody's on the ice. And all players that come on the ice from the bench to get into a fight get an automatic $25 fine. So... I imagine we'll hear more about this little uh, Donnie book uh, during the week. Now well, we've lost Murray Balfour and Carl Brewer. They went through the board somewhere. Let me see if we can find Brewer. He's back out there. Murray Balfour can't find him. They were last seen oh, behind the leaf bench. <laughs> Fleming is still talking to Duff. Al McNeil's in on it. Isn't over yet. Now will be the tough task of finding your gloves. Bill, you could see this coming all night from the opening period. The uh, sticks were sort of, uh, there was a lot of spearing going on. They were sticking the, uh, players from both sides were sticking the sticks into their, uh, into their uh, tummies, and uh, this is what causes all this excitement, tempers. The referee's got to be a Methuselah to figure this one out. Well, it certainly erupted very quickly. Strangely enough, Bill, remember a few years ago when uh, Montreal and Toronto got into a similar similar fight with That's a right. minute, minute or two to go. The referee was Frank Udbury, and on that occasion, he cleared both benches, just left six players out to uh, finish the game. Very interesting to see what he does this time, but the Chicago Blackhawks had um, something like this a little earlier in the season in Montreal, and uh, although all the teams have been getting into it, they certainly aren't going to back down. No team is going to back down in this league, and uh, as I say, as you mentioned, with the high sticks flying around, it doesn't take them too long to start dropping sticks then and using their fists. That's right, Bill. Maybe it's best that yes, way. Yes, but see that some of the fans are a little agitated, although I saw one gentleman lean over uh, and grab a stick and uh, try shooting on the Maple Leaf Gardens ice. He must be from out of town and wants the home folks to know he's here. Now Howie Young's going over this list. Some fans are involved in an argument by the Leafs fans. Now then, the referee is trying to weigh them all off the ice. This all happens with three minutes and three seconds left to go. Rangers and Boston are tied 6-6. Montreal 5, Detroit 2, as Henri Richard scored at 19.59. That game's over. Montreal 5, Detroit 2. It's 3-0 here. And I wouldn't even 
attempt to say what happened in the fight as far as win, lose, or draw. However, we can remind you that this game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Just as we gave you that a time score, Boston has now gone ahead of the Rangers 7-6. Behind the net to Vaughn. Vaughn ahead for Harris. Harris brings it out on the right wing. Pass for Shaq. Goes to the corner. Shaq races after it. Right to center it he did. Right up to center ice. And there's Eddie Shaq with it again. He goes back into his own zone. Still has it. Pass it out to Harris. Harris back to Shaq. In with Ron Stewart. A pass to Stewart, and the shot was stopped by Glenn Hall. Back comes Stan Makita, up with Red Fleming. Over the line, Stan Makita gets a shot. Jack was caught with a high stick. There's going to be a penalty there. Fleming. Jack, down on one knee. Now Bond has gone after Fleming. They're at the penalty box. comes Shaq. Here Pilate there. Now Shaq is looking at Fleming. And Makita's in there with him. Fleming is out of the game. Going there. Now Fleming wants to take on Hillman. Now then, Bond gets a hold of Fleming, gets on top of him, keeps swinging at him. Still swinging. Now all the players are coming out on the ice. Now then Horton gets a hold of Fleming. And they're all getting into it. Dan Makita. And Keon. Al McNeil on top. Brewer's got a hold of Murray Balfour. And Balfour pulls his sweater off. Stanley is still trying to pull Hay off. Fleming gets up. Horton has a hold of him. Still has a hold of him. Then Hay gets on top of Stanley. Horton has Fleming. Now then Hillman goes at it with McNeil. And they haven't tired yet. Jimmy, this is quite a dirty brick. We almost saw this coming. Yeah, uh, Al McNeil and Larry, and Larry uh, Hillman are going at it. And there's Wayne Hillman standing right by watching his brother fight. One of the very few players that does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different fights. Look at the goalies down here, Bill. (laughs) 
Murray Balfour chasing Carol Brewer. Murray Balfour wants to get in a few shots. Well, we, maybe we can get a real full shot of all the gloves and sticks all over the ice. Now then, we have Fleming mixing it up again. And Stanley swings at Fleming, and they're all getting into it. Now then, here's Balfour and Brewer again. And Brewer mixing it up with Balfour. They're still at it. Brewer getting on top of Balfour. Now then, they're back on their feet again. Now he's banging with his head. They're still mixing it up. Now then, Balfour and Brewer, and they all get in on it. They're all fighting over at the leaf bench. And Makita. Ends up, gets a hold of Fleming. Fleming goes down. Duff has a hold of Fleming. And Kiko Mackey is grabbed, and this Renko grabs a hold of him. Bon and Dan Makita, the goalkeeper, still wants the melee. Okay, Jimmy. Hey, the goalkeepers must have a union. They've been talking to over. They're not interested in getting in any fights. Bill, there'll be at least 10 players. Well, not at least. There will have to be 10 players from each side will probably get fines because uh, everybody's on the ice. And all players that come on the ice from the bench to get into a fight get an automatic $25 fine. So... I imagine we'll hear more about this little uh, Donnie book uh, during the week. Well, we've lost Murray Balfour and Carl Brewer. They went through the board somewhere. Let me see if we can find Brewer. He's back out there. Murray Balfour can't find him. They were last seen oh, behind the least bench. <laughs> Fleming is still talking to Duff. Al McNeil's in on it. Isn't over yet. Now will be the tough task of finding your gloves. Bill, you could see this coming all night from the opening period. The uh, sticks were sort of, uh, there was a lot of spearing going on. They were sticking the uh, players from both sides were sticking the sticks into their uh, into their uh, tummies, and uh, this is what causes all this excitement, tempers. The referee's got to be a Methuselah to figure this one out. Well, it certainly erupted very quickly. Strangely enough, Bill, remember a few years ago when uh, Montreal and Toronto got into a similar similar fight with That's a right. minute, minute or two to go. The referee was Frank Udbury, and on that occasion, he cleared both benches, just left six players out to uh, finish the game. Very interesting to see what he does this time, but the Chicago Blackhawks had um, something like this a little earlier in the season in Montreal, and uh, although all the teams have been getting into it, they certainly aren't going to back down. No team is going to back down in this league, and uh, as I say, as you mentioned, with the high sticks flying around, it doesn't take them too long to start dropping sticks then and using their fists. That's right, Bill. Maybe it's best that yes, way. Yes, see that some of the fans are a little agitated, although I saw one gentleman lean over and grab a stick and uh, try shooting on the Maple Leaf Gardens ice. He must be from out of town and wants the home folks and always here. Now how are you? Going over this. There's some fans involved in an argument by the Leafs fans. Now 
then the referee is trying to weigh them all off the ice. This all happens with three minutes and three seconds left to go. Rangers and Boston are tied 6-6. Montreal 5, Detroit 2, as Henri Richard scored at 19.59. That game's over. Montreal 5, Detroit 2. It's 3-0 here. And I wouldn't even attempt to say what happened in the fight as far as win, lose, or draw. However, we can remind you that this game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Just as we gave you that a time score, Boston has now gone ahead of the Rangers 7-6. Well, referee Frank Udberry has got a private secondary down there at the penalty bench listing all these penalties. This is going to be a very interesting assessment of the situation. Well, I think we're going to have to have an adding machine, Jimmy, to uh, keep track of the assessment of penalties. We'll try and catch it on the public address system if they're going to announce it. Just about set to go again. You notice that we have a, a bunch of subdued hockey players at the moment. They're really tired. Well, now they had the score 7-6. Now they've taken it off the board again. And this is the game at Boston, 8-6. to six. Boston 8, Rangers 6. And the out-of-town scores, Boston 8, Rangers 6, Montreal 5, Detroit 2. That one's final. Well, now the two teams have gone to their respective players' benches. There's Punch and Wax and his Maple Leaf. Get a look at the Chicago Blackhawk bench. There we have Billy Ray. There's the center exit. Now we have the Chicago Blackhawks. There's Bobby Howe, Tommy Ivan, Billy Ray standing up on the bench, Ron Murphy, Wayne Hillman. Just to review the scoring for you, Armstrong from Keehan and Hillman at 11.30 in the first period is ninth of the year. In the second period, Mahavlich is eighth and assistant, 7.08. In the final period, Jack from Kelly at 3.35. Now then, the referee has called for the face-off. And whether he's, he's got major penalties up on the board, but no numbers. All the players, Chicago players, are over at the Chicago bench, including Glenn Hall. I believe they're just marking it down as they're going to play four sides. Larry Hillman has been sent to the dressing room. Carl Brewer has gone to the dressing room. Mary Balfour still on the bench. Ron Stewart is going to the dressing room. You don't see bench clearing brawls like that in the NHL anymore. What, Thank God. What, yeah, what triggered that? Was, <laughs> it, was there a history of you and Balfour, for example? No. Uh, no? 
No, it started, uh, a fight started, I don't even know who was in it, but a guy, everybody has a pose. And Ab McDonald was a guy, a big guy, who, who didn't even fight, he never fought. But he's always sort of a uh, fool around. And he was sort of getting into it as a third man, just trying to help out. And I was behind him, I picked him up and moved him aside, just saying, and I said to him, Abner, get the hell out of here. And all of a sudden, I felt something on the back of my head. And I thought, what? And it was Murray Balfour who was punching me on the back of the head. And I thought, isn't this interesting? And Murray Balfour's history is fascinating because he was brought in with Andre Tardif by Sam Pollock uh, for the Montreal Junior Canadiens. And they were supposed to be the tough guys against the Marlies because they had to beat us, which they'd never done. And one of the great classic battles was that. And Murray Balfour, of course, was in the center of it. And Harry Neal was on the other side. And Harry was always uh, an incredible guy. And he picked up Murray Balfour's stick and he was hitting Murray Balfour over the head. So Murray Balfour, that was in a fight he happened to lose at that time. But Murray Balfour was a tough guy. And in this particular fight, it would seem that we had a, uh, an altercation. Did we, he strip your sweater? I don't remember. You know, Let's take it, a look at the it's film. Gone. It was gone. It's gone. <laughs> okay. And, Very well off. Yeah. And, and how did? I've never seen anybody get pushed through the gate right into their own bench backwards. Well, it was harmless. I was uh, at that point, as you can see by the film, I'm a great backwards skater, and uh, so I go into the bench, and the bench is there, and Murray Balfour put his head down, and he was running me into the boards. Well, I didn't realize the bench was open, and as it turned out, I just went back through the bench and underneath the bench. And that was the end of the fight. Fortunately, a friend of mine came down from the stands by the name of Chateau Great. Ah, oh, this is the point down. everybody wants to know. E even today? Even today. Who and hit what? Balfour? It wasn't me. No, and it Press wasn't... Assured. Wasn't Bobby Haggard? <laughs> no, no. Wasn't it wasn't It was Dickie Shadow. Dick Shadow. Yeah. And you told me once why he, why he came down. Well, his son, Randy, was a goaltender, and I was his favorite hockey player. There you so go. Dick and I had a sort of a relationship. But the, this fight had a... Uh, an indelible uh, imprint on my mind, although, as you see from the fight, nothing really happened. Nobody ever hit anybody. I was coming back from a broken arm, and I really couldn't use my left arm. I was stupid to be playing. But that, from that incident, I had never recovered. My career was never the same. Go into that a little bit more. Just what, psychologically, what, it just psych destroyed me. Yeah? Yeah. That's very interesting. You, you were never the same player after that? Never. Wow. Is that when you started thinking, Hockey's not worth it. No, no, I'd been thinking that long before that, if you followed my career. That wasn't the point. I would have liked to have recovered from it, but uh, somehow or another I couldn't make that quantum leap to say, forget this nonsense, just go play the game, you know? But yeah. myself, personally, I just didn't make the adjustment. All right. Well, let's follow action on the ice then at Maple Leaf Gardens, the Hawks and the Leafs, and here once again, Bill Hewitt. See you well, Joe. Really Fleming, five minutes for sparing. Five minutes for fighting, a ten-minute misconduct, and a game misconduct. Makita, Makita, five minutes for fighting, a ten-minute misconduct. Mackey, a ten-minute misconduct. Balfour, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. Penalties for the Leafs, Vaughn, five minutes for fighting, a ten-minute misconduct, and a game misconduct. Stewart, five minutes for fighting and a 10-minute misconduct. Hillman, five minutes for fighting and a 10-minute misconduct. There's the penalty. Long shot at the leap goal. Time, 16.57. 16.57 was the time on those penalties. So Carl Brewer did not get a penalty and he's back on the bench. It goes down the ice, and Stanley back. Over to Horton. Horton comes up the center. Seems playing for a side. A long shot. Came right back out in front. Nesterenko after it. Two minutes and five seconds remaining in the game. Three nothing to score. Over on the left wing, the pass go to Howie Young. He breaks it on goal, and Simmons stopped that. And Simmons was hit. And Popridge plays it out and down the ice. Play is called. Don Simmons down on both knees as he was bumped by Howie Young. 
that appeared like an accident from here as he was going by. Simmons was well out of his net. May have just had his wind knocked out. Still down on his knees, Shaq comes out. Now Simmons gets back up again. Bobby Haggard, the trainer for the Maple Leafs, gives him back his mask. Now coming out is Carl Brewer. Along with Shaq. Horton is going to stay out. Esterenko, Vasco, and Young. Shaq gets it back to Horton. Martin to Brewer. Brewer. At center ice. Passed it over to Horton. Martin rags the puck. Pass for Shaq off the board. Esterenko goes back. Picks it up in his own zone. Passed it over for Elmer Vasco. One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the game. Howie Young to center. Pass over to Vasco. Stopped by Horton. Goes back at center. Esterenko. Back to Vasco. Over the line, a pass at the blue line. Howie Young moves up. Tried to pass it through, and Tim Horton has it. Gets up for the pass to Shaq. Over the line. Takes his shot, right on, Horton lets it go, right away. Back for Nesterenko, 40 seconds left. Drags it over the line, Shaq breaks it up. Flips it, it goes high near Simmons. Over to Carl Brewer, Carl Brewer with it. Carl Brewer, in the corner, back to Horton. Out here to Shaq, Shaq got a break. They're trying to get back over the line. Shaq still with it. Has it down the ice into his own zone. Simmons after it, 10 seconds. Horton, a flip pass into the, on the boards to Shaq. Five seconds, takes a long shot. And Glenn Hall stops as the game is over. Here are the three stars of tonight's game, selected by Jim Vipon, sports editor of the Globe and Mail. The first star, Don Simmons. Second star, George Armstrong. Third star, Bobby Howe. Jim, uh, Don Simmons kind of made your uh, chance of a choice there rather uh, good uh, on the basis of his great performance tonight. Uh, he was your number one choice. Now, how? what's the uh, reason? Well, there's no doubt about it. He should be number one choice. That's his second shutout in, in two games, and uh, he's supposed to be the second string goalie, but he's going to make it awfully tough for Johnny Bauer to get back in here. He played very, very well tonight. Rogers. So what about uh, Armstrong? Well, now? I picked uh, George Armstrong as he represented the, as cat team captain represented a great team effort tonight and uh, Bobby Hull your, your well, Bobby third. Hull is always the best of uh, the Chicago's and they didn't have too many stars tonight but his uh, dipsy dooly dipsy doodling freewheeling certainly stood out for Chicago you didn't take into account anything on the fight tonight no we'll leave <laughs> that to the referee <laughs> 
Well, he certainly took care of plenty, didn't he? He certainly did. Well, it was quite a battle royal, and the Leafs finally defeated Chicago for the first time this season. Now, the shots on goal, the Toronto Maple Leafs outshot Chicago 30 to 23. In the other games tonight, both final, Montreal defeated Detroit 5 to 2, and Boston outlasted New York 8 to 6. The league standings, Chicago, of course, still a well out in front with 36 points. Montreal in second place with 29 and still hanging on. The Toronto Maple Leafs with 28. Detroit with 17. New York and Boston tied with 15 points apiece. And so once again, the final score, Toronto Maple Leafs 3, Chicago Blackhawks no score. Nothing. A goal in each period. First period goal by George Armstrong. Second period goal by Frank Mahovlich and Eddie Shack wrapped up the scoring in the third period of play. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. For the Leafs tonight over Chicago, a big brawl in the game, but uh, I wonder about the makeup of this lead, Leaf team. Uh, good enough to keep going and become a dynasty? In my humble opinion, yes. They were great, good enough, as, as they were presently constituted, to uh, oh, but become there was a, a dynasty. change, right? There was a huge change. Big trade in midseason. Was it necessary? Well, I'm, I'm going to ask not, you. <laughs> not in my humble opinion. Uh, the trade was made uh, to bring in Bathgate and McKinney, who were both fine, fine hockey players. But we gave up uh, Dickie Duff, who was probably one of the great uh, playoff performers of all time. We gave up Bob Nevin, who I grew up with and became the captain, who was captain of the New York Rangers for eight years. Rod Sealing, who and Barney Brown, who both became all-star defensemen. And Bill Collins was uh, a checking uh, uh, styled forward in the NHL, so we gave up an awful lot. Did we need to do it? As I say, not in my humble opinion, but it was done. Was it a, uh, a, a, a lack in our team? I think not. Could it have been a lack behind the bench? I think more than likely it could have been that. Well, Mr. Imlach was prone to making changes and trades, and uh, he dumped Mahovlich. He, he kind of forced you to rethink. I remember that. I, I dumped Imlach. <laughs> you dumped Imlach. That's right. <laughs> What did you do after that? I went to university. I went back to uh, university uh, to finish up my uh, BA, which I'd almost uh, complete. I only had to go for one year. And then Europe? No, I went to Father David Bauer's team for a year. Then I went to a place called Muskegon, Michigan, but don't feel sorry for me because I was not underpaid. I was making probably more money than anybody in the NHL. And then the next year I went to uh, Helsinki, Finland, which was the greatest hockey experience of my life. Really? Oh, absolutely. You were known as kind of Mr. Hockey over there, weren't you? Well, it was easy. There weren't a lot of hockey players there. <laughs> then was, back to the NHL. Uh, yes, I came back straight enough with my friend Bobby Bond. He dragged me down to a party in Detroit, and uh, I signed a blank contract that night with John Ziegler, who was not the president of the NHL, but was rather a functionaire with the Detroit Red Wings. And that's when I made the decision to come back to the NHL. I didn't know I was going to make that decision. We were skating at double rinks one day, and you wound up with the St. Louis Blues. Yeah, that's another story, Brian, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know how that worked out, but I'd retired again, and St. Louis uh, wanted my rights, and I ended up going back to St. Louis. And finally, coming back to the Leafs, that was a story, a big story at the time. Have you not heard in every instance, every hockey player you've ever met, no matter what happens, when he comes back to the Toronto, when he gets traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs, he says, my God, I always wanted to play here. That's the dream of every kid. Michael Renberg from Sweden says, I always wanted to play for the Leafs, just like Borja Salmi. So one way or a knife, the Leafs are it. Well, it was interesting. You were how old then? 41? No, I was 40. 40? 39, actually. And some of the guys didn't welcome you. Uh, no, they didn't welcome me at all, but of course, Eagles, oh, my, excuse me, but somebody else was running the team, and Imlac was running the team, and it was the usual scenario. Uh, it was a strange, strange experience to have players not pass you the buck because they didn't want you there, but I was having fun. They couldn't offend me. We pass you the puck in our old-timers oh, games. Oh, that's much always. more fun. Always. always. Yes. And every hockey player should thank you for what you did for the players and the association in the battle for the alumni fund money. I was, uh, I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to do something like that. And we're grateful to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much for being with My us. My pleasure. Thank you. Carl Brewer. Brewer is 25. Stewart gets it over to Brewer. That's Brewer there, the youngster from the Marlboro Juniors. A clearing pass. Brewer is on the move now at center ice. Well, when I broke in with the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1958, I had come from a dynasty that was the Toronto Marlboro dynasty that had been uh, fostered by 
Staff Smythe and Harold Ballard. And we, the thing that uh, Stafford Smythe told me when I, was, uh, when I was 13 was that champions beget champions. Now, Carl Brewer and Jack get quite a kick out of this game. In fact, they've formed their own living room league. Who's winning right now, Carl? I'm afraid the champ's getting the best of me. What about you, Jack? You like the game? Gee, I think it's great. Well, I'm sure every youngster would like a game like this. Brewer carries out to center. Gets away from a check. Up with Duff. They're closing in. Duff. Brewer still has the puck. The pass to Brewer. He's going right around the curve. He's in the curve. Oh, ball going in. Passed it right in front. And Brewer breaks it up again. Brewer was right in the clear. And he hit the crossbar. It's Brewer going over the line. Going back. We were a dynasty because we became a dynasty when we were 12. And we were brought up through the St. Mike's and through uh, Marlboro's to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We knew how to win. We liked winning. It's a nice feeling. And we were part of a dynasty then. And I think we understood that we were growing into that. And Brewer takes it as he steps on the ice. Brewer has a breakaway. Going right in. He shoots. He scores! Have you not heard in every instance, every hockey player you've ever met, no matter what happens, when he come back to the Toronto, when he gets traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs, he says, my God, I always wanted to play here. That's the dream of every kid. Michael Renberg from Sweden says, I always wanted to play for the Leafs, just like Borja Salming. So one way or another, the Leafs are it. <laughs> 